Hi there. Welcome to Simple or Difficult, a channel where we teach you to use software seamlessly. In today's tutorial, we'll be looking at um, Revit user interface. Knowing the Revit user interface is important because they are what allows for effective user navigation in the software. So when you open your Revit, this is what you're going to see. Mind you, this tutorial was recorded using Revit 2022. When you're using a newer version or an older version of the software, you may notice a slight or a lot of differences in the user interface and functionality. But then you can still be able to follow through with this tutorial. Just have to figure things out a little bit. Okay? So when you open your Revit, this is what you're going to see. You are going to see what is called the Revit Home. All right. So this is where you open your Revit files from. Files that are saved locally on the network. You can also open a file from the Autodesk Docs. All right. You can create new files from here also. The same goes for the family. You can open and can create new families. All right. So. On this right hand side, that's where your recent files are showing. As you can see the thumbnails there, they are showing the files that you opened last. So when you click on them, okay, they open up those files. All right now, so let's go ahead and create a new, um, select your template. All right, make sure it's on project, hit OK. All right. So now let's jump into Revit so I can show you all the amazing features that are available for you in Revit. The first thing I want us to talk about is called the Revit Ribbon. All right. That is where all the tools that are necessary for you to be able to create your project. That is where they are. Okay. So but when you look at the Ribbon, you notice that there are other, there are tabs on the Ribbon. Okay. These are called the tabs on the Ribbon. They allow you to be able to assess other tools that you will be needing to be able to perform the tasks at hand. Alright, so as like we have the tabs on the ribbon, we also have what we call panel on the ribbon. Okay, the panel are more or less the categories of tools. The categories of tools that we have on the ribbon. Okay, so you can see the build, you can see circulation, you can see model, all right, you can see room area. Some of the panels have drop downs which will help you to better do what it is you want to do. When you look carefully, you will notice that the tools are categorized, you will see the line that are separating them. Okay, that is, that is what shows where the panel starts and where the panel has ended. Okay, so when you go over to structure, to the structure tab on the ribbon, you will notice that there are also panels. So if I say um, on the structures panel in the structures tab, okay, select the beam. I can also say on the dimensions panel in the annotate tab. All right. Okay. So that is that for the panel on the ribbon. Above the ribbon is what we call the quick access toolbar. All right. These are shortcuts. The quick access toolbar contains the tool you use most often. The quick access toolbar contains a set of default tools already, but you can always customize it. Okay. You can always add your own. Okay. If you want to add, just right click. And then you see add to quick access toolbar if you want to remove right click okay remove from a quick access toolbar you can always customize it to fit whatever you want okay all right so we have what we call the information center the information center is where you can be able to sign in into autodesk 360 uh, can, you can also access the autodesk app store from the information center all right so over here we have what we call the file tab okay from this file tab you are able to create a new project you are able to open an existing project too 
okay you're able to save and save us you're able to export to different file formats okay you're able to publish all right you can close your file from here too all right so that is it for the file tab for now so here we have what we call the home button if you click here it takes you back to revit home where we started all right so that is the home button and you can do all those things i said earlier from here too all right in revit it is not all the tools that are always available some tools show they show up when you need them all right let me show you what i mean when you come to the architecture tab on the ribbon <laughs> click on wall all right so now two things happened this came out and this also came out okay the first one is known as the contextual tab on the ribbon okay they are not always there but they show up to help you better use the tool you are about to use the other one this one here is uh, options bar options bar they are conditional tools that helps you to place the element or to use the tool better okay all right okay now let's talk about the properties palette okay with the properties palette you can do four things let's say you select the wall tool from the architecture tab on the ribbon with the help of the type selector you can select the type of element you will place in the drawing area or change the type of element already placed okay so when nothing is selected you can use the properties palette to make modifications to the active view okay you can work on the view template you can work on the extent the view range you can work on the graphics the scale okay of the active view all right so but when you select an element now you are now able to make modifications to the selected element. That is the third thing you can do with the properties palette. Okay, you are now able to make modifications to the selected element. All right, you you can change the base constraint. You can add the base offset. You can add the um, the top constraint. By the time we get into Revit proper, you will see how those things apply. In Revit, the properties palette through the edit type feature also gives you access to make modifications and changes to the element you are placing or in this case the element selected and this modification apply to all instances of the element type in the project. I will show you what I mean. So we have a 200 wall. Let me draw another one over here. And then another one over here. All right. So let me make changes to this one. Just that one. I'm going to adjust the thickness. I'm going to make the thickness 450. Okay. But before I do that, I want us to go to the quick access toolbar and grab the dimensions too. All right. Now hit tab. All right. So you'll be able to select the face. Press tab on your keyboard. All right. So you can see that it is 200 mm. Okay. So yeah. Let me make modifications to it. I want to show you how it is going to apply to all other instances in the project. So let's make this from 200. Let's change it to 450. All right. Say OK. Click on the OK button and then rename because now it's no longer 200 mm. Let's make sure that we always name our elements or components right inside Revit. OK, so hit OK. Now you see every single thing has changed to 450 mm even though i changed only this one that is one of the things you can do using the properties palette all right now we have what we call the project um, browser 
with the help of project browser you can always navigate around your project you can go to the floor plan you can go to the site plan from here you can see the ceiling plan from here you are going if you want to look at the walls from the elevation that is the wall that i just drew okay that has a knot that is side. this is called the project browser you can see the name written above here okay um you can even access the families from here if you want to make any edits and as time goes on as we go deeper into the tutorials of revit we're going to be talking about how you can edit your families okay so stay put all right so now we have what we call the view control bar okay this is the view control bar uh, the view control bar is very simple it is used to make changes to what you see in your drawing area okay you can use it to change the scale from here that's where you change the scale of your drawing okay you can use it to make the changes as you can see i just did that you can use it to change the details of your of your work whether it is coarse medium or fine okay you can use it to change the display the way the model is displaying you can make it shaded as you can see this is what the view control can do for you all right you can on the sun you can on the shadows you can edit the sun part from there okay you can work on your crop view okay you can hide or isolate an element temporarily okay you can review a hidden you know element a lot of things you can do from the view control bar remember it is it affects the model that you see on an active view okay so we have what we call the status bar all right the status bar the status bar is where you see you know that shows you what's going on in the drawing area okay so when you hover around this you see the the name of what you're hovering around it comes out by the cursor it also comes out in the status bar all right so the status bar when you are bringing in a file that is a bit heavy as you will see while you you continue using revit you'll realize that it's when it is reading it will be showing you the amount of that file that has been downloaded and all that happens in the status bar. even when you are exporting when you are printing they all show up on the status bar to let you know how many you have downloaded or how many you have exported okay so that's that so the last thing i want us to talk about i want us to talk about the drawing area all right the drawing area is this entire area you are seeing okay you can have a lot of active view thanks to the tab i think this tab came in in the um, revit 2019 release okay with this tab you can easily navigate through different views okay but if you don't want this type of view and you want to change it to tile view you can go to the view tab on the ribbon all right this is the tab view that we are working with now you can change it to tile view everything will be showing at the same time but if you don't want to work with it like that you can always go to the tab view and let's say you are working and you, you have a lot of tabs opening and you don't want to be closing the one after the other you can always hit the close inactive it will close all the tabs except the one that is active all right so the drawing area is basically the area where you are the active view you know the area where you work okay so this is your drawing area you can always make modifications to it you can always change the color of it through the file i will get into all that later but let me just quickly show you let's say you want to change the color of your drawing area to gray okay you go to files go to option all right that's the quick one go to graphics then see the background that's the background of the drawing area you change it to gray you can pick from the color swatches here or you can put your own rgb if you have one already you hit ok you see that's the drawing area changing color all right to help your eyes better okay so that's it for today's class if today's class helped you please like and share okay recommend these videos to your friend and also hit the subscribe button thank you very much see you in the next tutorial